Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at how you multiply and divide complex numbers in argument modulus form so that we can answer exercise 2D. So here is uh, how we're going to prove our theorems. Um, the theorem is that when you have two complex numbers uh, that are represented in argument modulus form here, so R1 bracket cos theta 1 plus I theta 1 uh, and R2, uh, the second complex number is R2 cos theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. Uh, then when you multiply your complex numbers together, the key part here is that you multiply the modulus together and you add the arguments together, just like this. So let's go and see how we would prove this. You don't need to know the proof, but I'm going to show you the proof just so you know where it's come from. But you do have to memorise this rule here. When you multiply two complex numbers in argument modulus form, you multiply the moduluses and add the arguments. Um, the proof starts by uh, converting the complex number into exponential form, so a third form that you'll see um, in the second year of further maths. Um, not quite yet, but it goes like this r1 e to the theta 1 i and r2 e to the theta 2 i. Now you can see here e, it doesn't matter what e is, e is just a, a base number, a base value. Um, it is representing the exponential value of um, e, um, but you don't need to, to really know what that is yet. Uh, and the way that we would times these two complex numbers together is as so, r1 e to the theta 1 i times r2 e to the theta 2 i and remember, when you times powers, you times the, the values at the front of those base numbers, R1 and R2, and you add the indices together. So that's why you add the arguments together and you multiply the moduluses, because when you, add, when you multiply indices, you add the index number um, above on the power number, um, so that's why we add the um, arguments. And exactly the same thing goes for, for subtracting as well. If you do um, Z1 divided by Z2, you divide your moduluses, but you subtract the, um, you subtract the arguments. And the basis for that is that when you divide, um, when you divide powers or you divide uh, yeah, powers, you subtract the indices one from the other. Uh, to get your final answer. So, how do you times complex numbers in modulus argument form? You multiply the moduluses and add the arguments. How do you divide numbers in modulus argument form? You divide the moduluses but subtract the arguments. Okay, so we've seen where that comes from. Let's now go ahead and use it. Let's multiply these two numbers here together. So we've got the complex number of 3 cos 5 pi by 12 plus i sine 5 pi by 12 times by 4 cos pi by 12 plus i sine pi by 12. Okay, so what do we do when we times? We multiply the moduluses and we add the arguments. So multiplying 3 and 4 together, we get 12. And adding together 5 pi by 12 and pi by 12, we get 6 pi by 12, or in other words, pi by 2. So 12 cos pi by 2 plus i sine by pi by 2. Question here wants us to leave our answer in the form of x plus yi. So expanding the brackets, 12 times cos pi by 2 is uh, cos pi by 2 is 0, so that's 0, and sine of pi by 2 is 1, so it's 12i, effectively. So that's the answer to this question here. Quite a long, complex question, but with a very simple answer, 12i. Let's have a go at this one here then. So, 2 cos pi by 15 add i sine pi by 15 times 3 cos 2 pi by 5 minus i sine 2 pi by 5. Now, this negative here, that's incorrect. You should not have a complex number 
that has a negative in between the cos part and the sine part. It should always be a plus. So how can we manipulate this value here so that this uh, complex number now has a plus in the middle of it? We may have to do some fudging of the arguments here. Now we're going to have to incorporate the negative here inside the sine value. Now if we've got a negative at the front of a sine, you can see here that we have a negative in front of the sine value, we could also transform that into sine of a negative angle. So instead of thinking this as minus i sine 2 pi by 5, we could think of this as positive i sine minus 2 pi by 5, but then we'd have different angles. We'd have a 2 pi by 5 angle and a minus 2 pi by 5 angle. But we can also use this rule here. And the rule here states that cos of a positive angle is exactly the same as cos of that negative angle. So we could also change that to cos of minus 2 pi by 5. Um, so it matches up with the sine of minus 2 pi by 5. So what we're going to do is effectively use that negative symbol and change the arguments of both of the values uh, in the second complex number. So now it's cos bracket minus 2 pi by 5 with a plus in the middle, which is exactly how we want it, uh, plus i sine minus 2 pi by 5. So now we can go ahead and times our complex numbers together. Remember, we multiply the modulus and add the arguments. When we add a negative value, we obviously take away. So it's 2 times 3 is 6 times by cos pi by 5 minus 2 pi by 5 plus i sine pi by 15 minus 2 pi by 5. Simplify both of those values here and you get 6 cos minus pi by 3 plus i sine minus pi by 3. Simplify in x plus y i form expand the brackets and we get 3 minus 3 root 3 i so that's our final answer there so if you ever have a negative in between um, your exponents in, in between your modulus argument form then incorporate that negative into both places in the argument and change that negative to a plus then follow the same rules that you've done before Let's have a go at a division one then. So this is root two times cos pi by 12 plus i sine pi by 12 divided by two cos five pi by six plus i sine five pi by six. So how do we combine these two? Well, we're gonna divide the moduluses, but now we're gonna subtract the arguments. So follow the rule then. So it's two root two over two cos pi by 12 minus 5 pi by 6 plus i sine pi by 12 minus 5 pi by 6 and do the division so we'll keep this as root 2 over 2 and then simplifying your arguments here you get minus 3 pi by 4 plus i sine minus 3 pi by 4. Uh, the question here is looking for you to represent it in x plus y i form so go ahead and do that expand the brackets and you'll get minus a half minus a half i. So there we are then, that's how you divide two complex numbers then. So let's have a go at it ourselves then. So have a go at these two questions here then, pause the video and try these two out. All right then, so let's have a go at part A of question one here. What's the modulus of Z1, Z2? Well here effectively what we're gonna do is use the rule of Z1, Z2 can be calculated by multiplying the moduluses separately. The modulus of Z1 is five, the modulus of Z2 is six, so times the two together and you get 30. The argument of Z1, Z2, so when we multiply these together, remember when you multiply the complex numbers together, you add the arguments together. So what we're going to do here is arg of Z1 plus arg of Z2. So that's effectively 3 pi by 8, add 7 pi by 8, 
which is going to give us 10 pi by 8. Now, if you remember, the rule for argand diagrams is that the arguments can either go from 0 rounds to positive pi or from 0 rounds to negative pi. Uh, 10 pi by 8 has gone past the point of 180 degrees. Um, it's gone past the pi value. So what we're going to have to do here is um, it's gone 8 pi by 8 rounds here plus another 2 pi by 8, so it's actually round down to here. So in actual fact, the final answer to this question here is going to be, the argument is minus 6 pi by 8. Um, you could effectively think of it as 2 pi minus 10 pi by 8, um, or you can think of it as, well, that's 8 pi by 8. We've already gone 2 pi by 8 round, so we're now down at minus 6 pi by 8. So you can never have a final answer for an argument that's not in between pi down to minus pi. And in this case here, we've had to slightly adjust the 10 pi by 8 down to minus 6 pi by 8, or you could effectively think of this as minus 3 pi by 4, um, because it would have been outside the range if it was, my, if it was 5 pi by 4. Part C here. So to multiply these two complex numbers together, we multiply the moduluses together, so it's 30, and then it's going to be cos of minus 3 pi by 4 plus i sine minus 3 pi by 4. So there we go, that's the final answer to question 1c. Uh, question 3D here now. Now, the first thing I would do with this problem here is sort out the negative symbol that's in between the cos and the sine for the first uh, angle here, for the first complex number here. Now, the way that we do that is we incorporate in the negative into the, um, into the arguments just like this. So it was pi by 3, now it's going to be minus pi by 3. It's now a plus... and it's minus pi by 3 there. And this is going to be times root 3 cos pi by 3 plus i sine pi by 3. Okay, so root 6 times root 3, that's going to be um, 3 root 2. And then we add the com add the arguments together, which will give us zero. So it's just going to be cos of zero plus i sine of zero. And cos of zero is one, sine of zero is zero. So the final answer here is three. Whoops, three root two. Okay, so that's the final answer for question 3D. So pause the video, have a go at lots of questions from exercise 2D, persevere through the difficult ones, make sure you know the rules of how you times complex numbers together in argument modulus form, how you divide complex numbers in argument modulus form, making sure that your final answers don't have angles that go beyond the pi to minus pi limit, um, and make sure you know how to adjust a complex number if it's got a negative in between the sine and the cosine part. Alright then, thanks very much for watching.